Today on The Hopefulest, stop chasing happiness, 17 alternative ways to live your best possible life. Plus, things, they're getting a bad rap. Welcome to The Hopefulest, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Good morning. It is a happy hump day, Wednesday, October 9th, 2019. Day 25 of Gotta Get On Ellen. Ellen, are you listening? Me and my podcast partner, Tucker, are waiting for the phone call. We are sitting by the phone, or rather the phone is sitting by us, and we're ready to go whenever you are ready to have us. So this is the third day of my vacation. I am probably up and watching the beautiful sunrise as we speak. Having maybe a mimosa? I don't know. There's no schedule. There's nothing that has to be done. I will be checking in with you from time to time on my vacation. But uh, here it is. The fourth podcast that I have recorded today. (laughs) So (laughs) I did take a little nap. I've recharged. And hopefully I will not be mumbling and stumbling all over my words like I had been. So... Today, I wanted to talk about an article uh, that's from tinybuddha.com. Now, Marcy was kind enough to post this in the group page, the Hopefulist group page. If you are not already a member of the group page, just ask to uh, join the group, and I will immediately accept. And um, you can scroll through. There's quite a few articles that are posted on the group page. And this one is Stop Chasing Happiness. 17 Alternative Ways to Live Your Best Possible Life. This is down a little bit on the group page, so just keep scrolling and you will come across it. According to this article, the problem with happiness is that no one really knows exactly what it is. It's intangible, even a little mysterious, yet still we all want to be happy. But trying to be happy is like trying to get to sleep. The harder you try, the less likely it is to happen. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. You can't just wish to be happy. You have to do things that will make you happy. So she has 17 tips on ways to look at life that don't include the word happy. In fact, number one is take the word happy out of your vocabulary. Sometimes a word can get overused and it becomes confusing, stifling, and even dangerous. If you find yourself asking, am I happy, replace the question with, do I have contentment in my life? Do I have laughter in my life? Do I have peace of mind, cheerfulness, playfulness, hopefulness, blessedness, enjoyment? Those are the questions you should be asking. Number two, live in the present. Letting go of past regrets and future anxieties is not easy, but it is the fastest way to live a full and enjoyable life. Like I always say, simple, but not easy. Think about enjoying each moment for its own unique role in the ongoing narrative of your life. Number three, decide what you really want to do. Knowing yourself and what you truly want can help develop a sense of purpose and focus, so much so that you don't even have time to waste pondering happiness. You may even realize that happiness happiness is not what you really want, that you're willing to put up with being unhappy some of the time if it means you will have a sense of achievement. Like I have mentioned before about my paying my dues in radio. I went through a period of three years where I had not one day off. I worked seven days a week. I worked in the middle of the night. I was paying my dues. I saw there was a light at the end of the tunnel. I was willing to suffer in order to get what I wanted, and I did. Number four, let go of unrealistic expectations about how happy you are supposed to be. Though you should strive to live the fullest life you can, it's actually more normal and perfectly okay to live an average life interspersed with brief periods 
of joy. They say that this idea of supposing to be happy all of the time is pretty new. Most of human history, people lived relatively rough lives. Number five, take small daily steps. If you think you know what you want and you're determined that it will make you happy, at least decide on small daily steps that can take to get there. Number six, make serving others a regular habit. One key of unhappy people is... They are inherently self-centered. This doesn't mean that they're bad people by any means. It just means that their minds spend a disproportionate amount of time focused on the self. And serving others is a way to break the pattern. Number seven, separate your happiness from your achievements. We all need to learn to do that. It's okay to feel content with our lives simply because we have an inherent sense of worth. Number eight, don't force yourself to be positive all the time. There is a lot of advice in the self-help community uh, community and spiritual circles about being positive. Unfortunately, this is not always the best advice. It's better to be positive when you're actually feeling positive than it is to be positive when you're feeling negative. I say, though, that when you're feeling negative, look for something that will make you feel positive. No, we can't feel positive all times, at all times. But we can try and change things around so that we're not faking it. We're just finding smaller things to be happy about. Number nine, remove things that prevent happiness. This is actually a lot more important than finding things to make you happy. I agree with this one wholeheartedly. Are you in a toxic relationship? Do you dislike your job? Are you eating a lot of unhealthy food? These things all need to go before you start to seek happiness. Otherwise, they can hold you back and you may never be satisfied. Number 10, be okay with okay. When people ask, how's work? How's the new city? How's your relationship? Don't feel compelled to say really good, even when it's not. We're so conditioned to feel like we need to have the best of everything that okay just isn't good enough for most of us. Learning to be okay is a better strategy. Okay, I'm not so sure about that one either. Number 11, get out of your comfort zone. Getting out of your comfort zone is good, not only for your sense of self-worth, but it also gives your brain a huge adrenaline dump and a flush of endorphins. You'll know when you're getting out of your comfort zone, when you feel anxious before doing something, but you do it anyway because you know it is beneficial to you in the long run. Afterward, you'll often feel a huge relief and sense of self-worth at having done something you were scared to do. Exactly. Number 12, look after your body from muscular tension that can trap emotions to serotonin production and bacterial imbalances in your gut. Your body is the number one vehicle that will allow you to experience joy and satisfaction, so treat it with care. I've gone over a lot of this with you guys already. Number 13, meditate daily. I'm sure anyone reading this article or listening to me now is familiar with the physical and psychological health benefits of mindfulness and meditation. I am not a fan of meditation. I gave it a good six months. I did not feel much different. Therefore, I figured it was not for me. Does not mean it won't help you. Number 14, meet new people. Meeting new and positive people can give you new vital energy that kickstarts your life and helps you focus on enjoying the present. Because we are such social creatures, having like-minded people in our lives can have such a powerful impact on the way our habits and beliefs develop. As the old saying goes, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. This is all sounding very familiar to me, people. So, to find people with similar interests and ambitions in your city, there are plenty of sites that can help. You can try meetup.com. Or just do a simple search in Facebook for groups in your area. This is the easiest time ever to meet people. I met all of the people in my neighborhood because one person posted in the group page one day in the community group page saying, I'm here for the winter looking for some things to do. Does anybody want to start a book club? Now there's like 90 some people in the book club. I have all these friends that I hang out with all the time. Be that person. Throw it out there. Start a book club. Start a pickleball club. Start a bowling club. Do whatever kind of club you would like to try. You will get people to respond. 
Unless it's something really stupid like, you know, reading comic books or something like that. I kid, I kid. Kind of. Number 15, go out in nature. I've said this before. A lot of the time, our worries and concerns are largely linked to our environment, both immediately, such as the construction noise outside, and peripherally, such as when an advertisement on TV reminds you of a past failure. Nature allows you to completely unplug, allowing yourself the space to experience relaxation and acceptance. Number 16, be honest with yourself. Discontentment often comes from what psychologists call uh, cognitive dissonance, incongruence between two conflicting ideas or emotions in your mind. You know, I I pre-read this, and I thought I'd have trouble with those four uh, $2 words all strung together. However, I did not think that the trouble spot would be cognitive. (coughs) Excuse me. Oh, so I psych myself out. Now, you can greatly reduce this by just accepting, admitting, and experiencing the emotions that are passing through you. If you're sad, allow yourself to be sad. Move through the emotion. It's okay. Number 17, the final one, energize yourself in the morning. As much as we like to think we have control and autonomy when it comes to our feelings, the truth is that momentum is a huge factor. Morning routines have been a keystone habit of content and successful people through, uh, excuse me, a keystone habit of content and successful people throughout history. And for good reason, starting your day with a spiritual practice, a physical practice, and a healthy breakfast may not seem like much, but compounded over years, it can make all the difference in the world to your well uh, well-being. A lot of people ask me um, why I still get up so early because I still get up at 4 o'clock in the morning every day. And a lot of people ask me why I do that. One of the reasons is because I would like to get my podcast on by 7 a.m. Uh, another reason is I'm just so used to those hours. Um, I've been doing them for so long. And um, I'm always hitting buttons. And um, honestly, I am most productive in the morning. I am at my optimal in the morning once two three o'clock hits since I've always been done work by that time that's like kind of you know my downtime I'm kind of hanging low I'm kind of not ready to do anything so that's one of the reasons why I still get up early and it works for me I you know and now I definitely get to take a nap just about every day so it works for me I'm cool with it so there are some alternative ways to think about your satisfying life other than Happiness, pure and total happiness. Some of them I agree with. Some of them I'm not so sure about. So my blog post for today, things are getting a bad rap. Everyone is talking about having moments instead of things these days. I get it. We should be focusing on experiences rather than material items. There is a high value on living in the moment, and I agree with that 100%. But... I also think there is a lot to be said about having things in your life that you love. It is about the small things. I have a picture up of my little eagle's keychain that I had gotten for Christmas from my husband this past year. The eagles were the reigning Super Bowl champs at the time, first time ever. Still on the high from it, still am. I am very into glitz and glamour, so this item seemed perfect for me to tote around every day. It's all glittery and shiny and if only it lit up it would be perfect it was only about 6.99 and I do smile every time I see it on the other hand I have some pretty expensive items that I just love and feel contribute quite a bit to my daily happiness I splurged on a Louis Vuitton purse last summer that I had been dreaming about for years this is a high ticket item But I have used it every single day since the purchase, and it brings me a lot of joy. Yes, I am trying to impress people with my fancy designer bag, and I think that's okay as long as you pick and choose between your priorities. Some people prefer a high-end car. I have a low-end car. Some people dress in the latest styles every season. I wear a sweatshirt and jeans or leggings and shorts. I'd rather have the bag. Those are my choices. 
I think some other expensive purchases are worth it, too. We all know how much a kitchen remodel is, something that we want to get done very bad. 